Hey Divas, welcome or welcome back. It's your girl Keisha here with another video and I'm excited about today, girl. Today we are moving into my new back to school savings challenge binder for my kiddos. So if you like sinking funds, savings challenge, cash stuffing, budgeting, planning, every and all things that have to do with your money, I will love for you to subscribe, but more importantly, don't move. So Diva, if you are not new here, you know that I have a back to school binder. This is my current binder. Um, I did take everything out of this binder a few weeks ago because I just kind of had to do a restart. And that's what we're gonna do here today. I just launched these new binders. I did a quick video. I'll be sure to link it down below some of the new things that I'm offering in my shop. And this is one of them. I just gave this back to school situation to upgrade. The envelopes and everything are still the same. All the categories are the same. I just refreshed the binder to give it a more like back to school. Don't you feel like it's back to school? It's like a composition book. It's giving me all the vibes, all the things. So what I want to do is since we're pretty much starting from scratch, I really want to start from scratch and do the work. So we're going to go ahead and set up the amounts I need to save for each category again. The school year is upon us and I just want to set goals that I want to meet this school year and beyond. So I figured I'd just show you guys how I come up with my numbers and um, we're going to move into this new book. Okay, so it's important for me to do this before I do the cash stuffing in my back to school binder. So let's go ahead. I have my book. I have my sinking funds setup tracker. If you want a copy of this, this is a free PDF, a free PDF. You can click the link down below if you have never seen or never received a copy of this before. You just gotta put your email in there and then this email, this PDF will be automatically sent to you. So uh, let's get to work. Okay, so this book comes with 12 envelopes and I personally added about one or two more envelopes, but we'll get to that when we get there. So first things first is birthdays. It's gonna go ahead and fill that in. Now birthdays for me is um, really the teacher's birthdays. Kids' birthdays, uh, you know, I, I can dip into it typically if I want to, but for birthdays for me, I'm at $100. I'm at $100. So my amount needed is $100. When's the due date? Mm, I would like to have $100 by January, okay? The due date will be January. That's 2025, just to be clear. My pen is running out. Girl, let me get... I got this red pen. We're going to have to use that because that's closest to me. Um, okay, so how many months till January? So this is July. So we're going to count. So we're going to count July, August, September, October, November, December, January. So we have seven months. Um, we have zero dollars saved. So how much amount do we have left to save? We have a hundred dollars, girl. And amount to save per month. So how that works, we're gonna just take 100 divided by seven. So $14.28, let's just call it $15. Let's just round up. Call the $15, okay? Next up, we have the book fair. Girl, the book fair, they, they get me, girl. They get me all the time. So book fairs for us is uh, twice a year. Let me go ahead and fill this in. So I haven't heard my oldest son, he's in uh, middle school, say he's going to a book fair, but my twins, definitely. So I like to give them, and it's twice a year for the most part. So I like to give them $20 each per book fair. That's $80, okay? Um, let me just go ahead and put that in. Now the due date, that's tricky because they're gonna have a book fair at the beginning of the year. So let me see, um, July, August, September, October. Okay, okay, so four. Okay, so I'm gonna say by February. Okay, that gives me eight months. I have zero dollars saved. So that's quick math to me. How much do I have left to save? $80, girl. And then that just means I have to save $10 a month. That would allow me, so if I stop in July, August, September, October, 
I will be good for the fall book fair. I'll get me the, the $40 I need for that. And then I'll have the other 40 for the spring book fair. So that, that's a good timeline. Okay, next is camps. Okay, I put the kids in summer camp. I, I try to put them in the county camps because they're typically cheaper. So they're 140 and I have the two kids. That's 280. And I only said two because now my son's gonna be 13. I really haven't seen camps for his age group. So I'm really more concerned about the twins. So they're 280 per week. I really want them to go at least for four weeks out of the um, summer. So times four, 1120. Okay. This due date is April. April's when the camps open and they fill up. Okay, so let's see. So you have July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Oh, girl, we have 10 months. That's good. I have zero saved. Okay, let's bring this back. So 120 divided by 10, 11, $112 per month, which is a lot. Now, I'm gonna be quite honest. I'm probably not gonna save this month and save this much until after September because we have, um, okay, so it's $112 a month, okay? Next is classroom donations. Again, I don't get much from my oldest, but the kids. So I would say 40 bucks. Let me take that back. Because they need candy. They need, they have holiday parties. They're going to need a lot. So I'm going to say 80 bucks. And um, I'm going to say by, so they're going to probably have a Christmas party and they're going to have like an end of school year, particularly a graduation. So I have some time for classroom donations. So I'm going to say, let's have it by March. We could say by April. Okay, so April means that's also 10 months. That means I'm going to save $8 a month to get to that goal, okay? Next is clothing. I shop for these kiddos all year round. So for me, this will really be uh, clothes for like the fall, winter because they're still wearing their summer gear. So I'm just gonna say $300. I'm gonna give each kid $100 each. I said June and hear me out why I say June because if I see something, girl, I'm going to get it. If it's three or four or $5, I'm gonna get it. But for June, I could be intentional because this will really be for like the school year, next school year. Okay, so like right now, this month, I'm gonna be buying back to school supplies. I'm gonna be buying them sneakers, okay? Because they're still gonna be wearing their summer clothes for the first few weeks of the year. So if I set this up for next June, when I'm buying them like summer clothes, it's really like school clothes, okay? If that makes sense, but. So June, that's pretty much 11 months. Okay, so we're 11 months. I don't have anything saved. I still have $300 to save. I'm gonna save $28 a month on average. Extracurricular activities, this is a big one. Okay, so my twins have been, um, they've been liking after school programs, girl. So it's been about 60 bucks twice a year. That's $240. So they, they, they like to do this, some that's due in the fall and the others do in the spring. So for me to meet the fall dates, they typically start, I will have to pay around September. So if I need 120 by September, let me do some math right here, girl. 120 by September, so that's, oops. 120 
divided by, so we have July, August, September, divided by three, that's $40. Okay, so I need this 240 by December. Because December is when they send out the sign up for act, act for after school in January when they come in from spring break, from fall break. I'm messing up, girl. I need 240, 120 for the fall semester, 120 for the spring semester. The fall semester, they typically solicit for that in September. So I need to have my 120 by September. And then for the spring semester, they usually solicit for that in December. So I need to make sure I have my 120 for September to pay for the October, November, December classes. And then the December class, I need to pay because they'll be taking that when they come back. So um, December is five months. Well, let's see, July, August, September, October, November, December, six months. I have zero saved. I think this ends up being 40, 240 divided by six. Yeah. Okay, $40 a month. That's why, I mean, the earlier the better. If I didn't have to like reshuffle my funds, I would be saving like ten, twelve dollars a month. But because I had to reshuffle my funds, I am, you know, I have a little larger amount of money to save. Okay, field trip. Field trip is gonna be expensive for me this year because the twins are graduating again, and I know they go on a field trip. Um, they go to like the Coca Cola factory or something like that. And if I remember when my fifth, my son graduated, my oldest son. It was like $100 each. So now I'm talking about that's $105, $100 for each kid. That's $200. And then my kiddo, the oldest one, still goes on a field trip. Girl, so I'm looking at $300, girl. And this is typically in the spring. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to say February. So I have eight months. I have a zero save. So let's see. 300 divided by eight. Girl, 3750. Let's call it $38. I really probably could have given myself some grace and said March, but they, they like to collect their money early, girl. Okay, graduation is the next one. This one's gonna be a little funky for me as well. Okay, so graduation, we have, again, my fifth graders. We have the yearbook. Then you want to do a little note in the yearbook, a little ad. That costs money. Um, I'm just trying to think of all the things. Um, and then actually graduation dinner, something for them to wear to graduation. Maybe they have a graduation party. I don't know. Graduation can be expensive. But I'm more so thinking about what I need to pay immediately for graduation. And that is, like I was mentioning, like the yearbook and those sorts of expenses. So um, I know I'm probably going to need about $250 come October. Girl, all right, let's just say $500. I think I'm gonna have to do graduation twice, okay? And I think I was doing it like this before. I'm gonna do 250. And because these are reusable, it's very easy for me to do that. So I just need to focus on the graduation money I need to pay in the fall. And that's the yearbook and us writing, putting the ad in the yearbook, okay? So I'm gonna go with 250 for that. So. And I'm going to say that's probably due around October. They, I think they give us until like October to get that done. So that's July, August, September, October. We have four months. I have zero saved. Okay, so let's see. 250, 250 divided by four months. That's $63 a month. These kids, girl, these kids are in my pockets. When I finish this and I pay the dues, I will come back again, redo the graduation, and then I'll save for the graduation gifts and 
the sign you put in your yard, all of those things to do um, for graduation, okay? Picture day. Picture day, I'm gonna say 120. Um, they do one in the spring and the fall. So I think I'm gonna take the same approach for graduation day and focus on the fall pictures. So if I'm gonna do that, 30, 60, 90. I'm gonna take this down to $90. I'm gonna take this down to $90. Because these pictures are getting out of hand. So spring pictures, um, they have them early, but I don't think we have to pay for them until we get them. So it's, I think it's gonna be November is when we actually receive it. Okay, so 90 divided by July, August, September, October, November, divided by five. Okay, good, all right, $18. So five months, $18. Okay, that takes a pressure off of me um, for that. And you know, I should really do even the extracurricular activities, I should, well, it's still gonna be the same math. That's fine. Book fair. Okay, everything else, everything else is fine. I was thinking if I should break it up by half year. Okay, school events. Okay, this is the father-daughter dance. They have a mother-son event. Then they have like a field day, the last day of school. Um, again, I don't think my middle school does anything that requires me to have money. So let's just do $120. These are all things that typically are in the spring, so I'm like February. So let's just shoot for February. Let's do eight months. Okay, let's see what that ends up being. 120 divided by eight, $15 a month. Okay. Okay, so that's good there school supplies so this is school supplies for next school year because i've already saved money for school supplies for this school year so this school year i decided i'm not buying the kids any new book bags or anything like that but for next school year particularly with the twins they're going to be heading off to middle school so i want them to have like all new things so for school supplies for next year i'm going to do about 300 bucks with the book bags and the school supplies and all of those things. So that'll be for July. So this one, I have the longest lead time for that. I have a year for school supplies. So 300 divided by 12. It's still $25 a month, girl, jeez. Okay. And the next Teacher Appreciation Day, which is in the spring of next year. Well, let me take that back. Teacher Appreciation Day is in the spring, but I still have to get these teachers something for the holiday season. So I think I'm gonna do this just like I did, um, like the graduation. I'm gonna split this up. So I'm gonna create a budget amount what I wanna spend on the teachers for the holiday season. So my twins will have between two to three teachers each. So let's just do some math real quick. So my oldest son will have about seven kids, I mean seven teachers, cause he's in middle school. And then the twins will have about two teachers each, that's four. And there might be some stragglers up in there. So let's just say 15 people. All right, so I'm a I'm a five dollar gift card giver, but then I also like to do it in something nice. Like last year, I put it in like ornaments and I put little candy in there. So pretty much on average, I spend about six dollars per teacher, times six dollars, so ninety dollars. Okay, let's just call it a hundred dollars. Okay, this is December. So we have um, six months, zero saved. 
So this should be about $15. Let's see, 100 divided by six equals, okay, 16, so 17 bucks. Okay, so again, once I hit these goals and I get the teachers all the things, I'll reset and then I'll start saving for the real teacher appreciation day, which is in the spring. So now I wanna bring you to my current binder. And um, I do have some money in some envelopes. So I have school supplies here. And I'm just gonna be, let's see how much I have in here. I should have 100, so 50, 70, 90, 100. Yep, so this is gonna be for this school year, so I'm not even gonna touch that. And then, I do have two categories that are unique to me. So, I wanna pull these out. If you decide to order one of these books and you want one of these, just write a note. I'll give you one of these as the freebie. I can't like list everything because some of your kids are in baseball, you know, football, basketball. So for the freebie, if you want a sports one, you can just um, write in the notes. I want a football, I want a soccer ball, whatever the case is. So um, for football, I need to update this tracker. I currently have 150, 65, 66, 67. Okay, so for this year, my son needs $500, okay? But I'm not gonna focus on this year. I'm gonna focus on next year because it's already too late. And next, so I'm going, I already have money I'm gonna stuff. And then in August when the money's due, I'm just gonna use my cash flow. I mean, I'm just gonna use the money that I get when I get paid. So I'm, I'm preparing for next year. I don't know if my youngest son wants to play football, but we're only gonna focus on the son that we do know wants to play. And that's gonna be 500. And I'm gonna need that in August of next year. Okay, so that means that gives me 13 months to get to that. So 500 divided by 13. So now I get to save $39 a month. Okay, so I will start saving for next year's football. My daughter's soccer, she's made uh, an elite team Girl, this team was like $1,300 to be on there. So I'm actually making monthly payments for that. But for next year, I wanna make sure I have that. And that's gonna be due in June. So that's gonna be 12 months. So this one's gonna be expensive. So. I'm not gonna kill myself with this one. So I'm actually gonna just try to save half of that. Let's just go for half for right now, okay? And the reason I chose half, girl, because I have a lot. This is a lot to be saving for. And um, I'm just gonna just start using a lot of cash flow, meaning when I get paid to make up the difference or if I get extra income. But I just wanna at least set a realistic goal. So 600 divided by 11 months and that's still $54 a month okay so it isn't cheap I'm telling you kids are expensive girl I don't gotta tell you that I know you already know so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna add these other additional things in here Okay, and um, work on getting to those goals. So now I'm gonna do some quick math and see, girl, how much money I should be saving per month to be on track with these um, sinking funds goals for my kiddos.
Girl, girl, do you see these numbers? <sighs> this is just the known expenses. This is just what it costs for my kids throughout the year. Not even to feed them or any of those other things that are necessities. This is like for them to even be active in school. You know, um, the camps. So for me to just do everything I've written down, I need to say $442 a month, which I know is not at this time is not doable for me because I have other priorities. So I just want to see what my numbers are and see where I need to put my money. So let's just say I only have $200 to stuff. There are some things that are more important to me that I want to make sure I hit, okay? So, like, I want to make sure I hit um, the extracurricular activities because that'll be due. I want to make sure I have money for my kids' yearbook graduation because that's important. Um, what else? The class, the, the camps. Camps are important because, first of all, they fill up really quickly. And even if I should have really broken this down, I said this is four weeks, so maybe I could just save four um, two weeks. So whatever I can do is what I'm going to do. So there are a couple things that I want to make sure I have the school supplies. I want to make sure that I have because these are things I just want to be stress free about when they do come up. But nonetheless, this is how I set up my sinking funds and how I set up the amounts I need. So that way when I'm doing my cash stuffing, I know how much I need to put into each of the categories. So this is a good indication if you've never set up sinking funds before. If you use this worksheet, it's very self-explanatory and you can come up with the numbers as to what you need for each event. And then see if they're realistic. Like this 442 right now today is not because I have to prepare for Christmas and Halloween and all the things. So I'm probably going to be actually saving half of this amount. So I'm going to be, so instead of maybe for camp, instead of 112, I might be doing, you know, five, um, what is that? Uh, $56. Okay, uh, instead of graduation, well, graduation is important to me, so that I get the full amount. So instead of football and soccer getting this amount, they may get twenty dollars each. You know, maybe in the springtime when I pay off some debt or when some Christmas is over and I have extra money, then I can come back and like bump up all these other things that are not due right now. But at least I have some money to put towards it. So, um, that's pretty much how that works. So I wanted to make sure I got this done before I did my cash stuffing. In my back to school binder so let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions um, on what I just did here let me know what your experience is saving for the kids if you are saving for your kids going back to school and um, how are you planning to make it through the school year girl because back to school is more than just school supplies girl it's more than just pens and books you can see it's a plethora of things that come up and for the most part you do participate if your kid the teacher asks for a roll of toilet paper like you do participate it adds up but doing it like this having a system in place and giving yourself a budget it makes it so much easier so for like classroom donations eighty dollars right that's all i got i can't do anymore there are 23 other parents in the classroom this is my budget this is the this is what i'm willing to give to help support you and the other kids in your class but i can't do so unknowingly or you know putting myself at risk for not doing other things so just giving yourself a budget will be very helpful well that's enough of me rambling girl so if you stay to the end go ahead give your girl a thumbs up like i said before leave a comment down below let me know how you're preparing for this school season and like always i'll see you in the next one later